right, Annie finally got this uh, big bottom opened up. Let's get started. 230, 240 acres left to go. I'm ready to get cotton plane wrapped up. cover crop right here they like to lay their nests in there and um, we really can't see them unless you scare them out well I just scared her over there so she's probably got eggs over there more smoking turkeys and uh, itching eyes closed oh it's so bad but uh, yeah that's all I got I'm tired uh, and the allergies are really bothering me so we're gonna get back to working I mean look how tall this is it is hitting the top of the sprayer. And of course, all you people that have been here forever know that I'm really, really allergic to rye. Uh, <coughs> it hasn't really bothered me until today. Um, but for the newbies, yes, I'm definitely like EpiPen allergic. And unfortunately, my EpiPen has been on back order due to insurance. So um, let's pray that I don't need to like call an ambulance. And EpiPens are extremely expensive. I think they're up to like 700 bucks now. So, do love this field though, because it's one of the very few fields that I can actually, you know, hands free. So, and Carter drilled this. So, I want to give props to my son. He did a really good job. All right, we just uh, getting done with this uh, 110 acres over here on Smith's family. Reckon we're gonna fold up and get on back towards the shop. Got uh, two more farms there close to the shop. We're gonna put this variety on, totaling about 90 acres. And hopefully it has dried up enough at home to get this planter through. We've had a good day and a half of drying weather since the last rain, so. I feel pretty confident it's probably gonna be about like this farm was when we started it yesterday. Hopefully we can just keep on rolling along, not have to hold up waiting on ground to dry out. Cause we don't have any other farms up this way that uh, missed out on that last rain we got the other day. come around that curve down there good lord she had been doing at least 60 miles an hour on a road that you ain't got no business going over 45 especially around the curve Shh. I, I, I thought I didn't think either one of us was going to stop I thought it was going to be a straight up head on collision and there's people nowadays drive like like they're the only persons that are on the road and the only persons that have a right to actually go anywhere. Mark my words, one day before I quit farming, there's a very good chance I'm going to be involved in an accident with farm equipment because there's, there's going to be a situation happen at some point that I absolutely cannot avoid. More and more traffic on the roads and people getting faster and faster and less uh, aware of their potential surroundings. Mark my words, I hate to say it, it's probably gonna happen. Man, my nerves are shot now. 
but anyway we got uh moved back here towards the shop and uh it's uh it's about like what i thought it's about as heavy as that other ground was when we started on it yesterday so it's it's about a day behind on drying but it, it's definitely plantable and the calendar keeps on marching on so we're going to keep on putting it in the ground hope to get this uh 33 acres done and then maybe half of the uh home place the farm across the road before we go home for the night we do that that'll leave us with 90 acres to do tomorrow which should be easily obtainable and now my phone won't stop going off because uh, i guess uh, kelly was mowing the yard mowing around the pond and she saw a snake in the pond and just like most everybody else that hates snakes is going to assume there's a cotton mouth when it was very plain to see it was just a common water snake completely harmless now she's freaking out and blowing up my phone i tried telling her that nine poisonous snakes keep help keep mice out of the house but she didn't she doesn't seem to go for that argument for whatever reason yeah i'm spraying 34 acres right behind the gin I'm gonna wait on Matt and Andy to kind of get closer. All of this is like perfect timing. I don't want to get too far ahead just in case there's a breakdown or Mother Nature decides to say not today like she has the past couple of days. So it's um, <laughs> really can't tell what time it is, can I? Uh, I think it's after 12. And I'm gonna go spray that park it wait in between i've got to clean uh empty some garbage um check on a kid he's supposed to start mowing i was really hoping the sun would be out more so he could mow without getting stuck because this child is famous for getting stuck and then um i think after that they get over here i'm gonna spray some more and then probably wait again and in between that i have um a house to clean, laundry to catch up on, possibly make some dinner. I have to answer two more emails. Carter is going to a new school next year. Um, it's a um, college prep private school and there's a lot of forms to fill out because he wants to start playing sports. <laughs> and apparently that's all summer long. So not only do we have baseball two nights a week until end of June, which runs into weed harvest, now we're looking at football practice from 7 in the morning until 10 a.m. So I'm gonna literally be running around like a chicken when its head cut off. So I'm trying to get all that organized and, uh, and, and do my job as well. So I know a lot of people don't see me around in some of the other videos, but there is a whole like other side full-time job that I have. about ready to call it another day. Yeah, that doesn't sound too terrible to me. Alright, you get those last couple passes done, just carry her on into the shop and uh and we'll see you at seven o'clock in the morning. Well, 10 four. I will be here at seven o'clock in the morning ready to roll. Yeah but my calculations we got oh about about ninety acres left so uh maybe they, if we don't have any problems should get done before we gotta turn our lights on. That sounds like a plan. Have you heard anything else about the, the precipitation <laughs> tomorrow? I'm not checking rain chances until I see drops on my windshield or after we get done. I heard that. If you see less than 10, just use your windshield wiper. Well, we've had a real good day. I'm sure you're thinking on that view. I see corn stalks out there. There ain't no green. Where'd the cover crop go? This right here is our adaptive management plot, you know, comparing cover crops and no-till. And right now I'm planting just the, the no-till strips while Andy's getting the cover crop strips rolled down. So kind of a different view right there. That's for dang sure. But yeah, we're going to have cotton on our adaptive management plots this year. And uh, I haven't really quite figured out how I'm going to measure yield because, uh, you know, we can't dump in a bowl buggy anymore with a cotton picker you know and you know a bow buggy with scales like we normally do our test plots 
you know, that module picker, the only thing we can do is, you know, form, wrap a module and weigh the module. But with that wrap costing about $42 per module, I mean, we just ha have this little strip. We'd have like a little, little bitty module, look like a big old cigar. And that would be a really, at $42 per plot, we got three plots replicated four times, so 12 times 42, or anyway, that would be some uh, really expensive plot work. So, I don't know, I might, instead of harvesting each replication individually, I might just uh, harvest, you know, each, uh, each trial that's rep replicated four times, just harvest all that into one module and then so on and just have three modules there that we weigh. Uh, we won't be able to see the differences in between each replication, but over the course of the whole plot, you know, we'll be able to see the difference in, if there's any difference in the trial or not. But anyway, we've had a real good day. I think, uh, I don't what, 120 acres or so is what we've done, and the sun just went down. It's only like 8.30, so gonna have what feels like a, another easy night for for them to get home. I think rain's still supposed to come in tomorrow. Like I told Andy, hadn't checked the forecast. Not going to check the forecast. We're just going to get after it and if we get done, fantastic. If if we don't, we don't. Anyway, see y'all in the morning. Hopefully what will be the last day of cotton planting. like these front hoppers when we're playing corn and soybeans. Sure is nice to be able to carry an extra bag in case I get back to the field and run out. Don't have to get anybody to bring me any. Alright, everything filled up, green, service, ready for the day. About 95 acres left. Andy and Kelly are already out ahead of me. Let's get done with cotton planting. Lord, please let us have a good day with no breakdowns. Be nice to go home early tonight. <laughs> so we planted all the way up to the creek. Uh, now we've got probably 100 acres left for the day. And it's supposed to rain like all night, <laughs> tonight and tomorrow. And so we're trying to get done. I went back and filled up half loads because um, where Matt did all his dirt work and it's really really wet in these bottoms. I don't want to sink. Um, he says I won't but you know what I would much rather do half loads since we're next to the um, shop than to do full loads where I could possibly get stuck and then we're wasting time pulling me out so it's a lot <clears throat> it's a little more work for me but um, I would rather do that than get stuck uh, especially out in this rye field. Uh, yesterday really did me in and uh, my eyes closed up at night and uh, it really brings my immunity down so the less I have to stay outside of this sprayer the better it is for me I'm, I'm doing the best I can this year's pretty bad um, I say that every year but this year's worse because I couldn't get an EpiPen and um, they wouldn't cover my inhaler so I wasn't paying $130 for inhaler I have to use once and then it go bad. So I'm really just trying to push through the last couple hundred acres with this rye. That's all I got. <laughs> I just want to be done with cotton planting. And next week's a full week of spraying again. Probably beans and corn, so. <coughs> Can't get through it, it'd be great. Here's where we finished up last night with my adaptive management plots. You can see the strips of no-till in there. And then there's, of course, the strips of cover crop. I think I've made up uh, my mind. Uh, we're going to have wheat on there this year. And I'm going to plant a summer cover plot on both of the cover crop plots. Just the summer cover and the winter cover one. And then after that, I believe I'm going to take just the strictly summer cover crop plots. 
and turn it into an intensive tillage plot to study the effects of tillage on degradation of the soil, especially when you've been in a long-term no-till environment and have built soil up, you know, how quickly does tillage tear it down? And because everybody seems to love the 4440 and gets plenty of views, I'm probably going to do all the tillage with that 4440, probably borrow a, a big old ripper from uh, Dylan and whatever and make a make a big old production out of it. 4440 videos made me a decent amount of money there. All right, Kelly just got done uh, over here at the home place and uh, Andy's on his last pass on this uh, 12 acre bottom. So I got a little catch up to do. Well, our dirt work where we, uh, you know, fixed the cover here is holding up nicely. I kind of wish I put in a 40 foot cover here instead of a 30 foot though. It's a little narrow with some of this equipment. Then we got some neighboring wheat over here. Man, that stuff looking pretty dang good and it's uh, it's coming on along pretty pretty quickly. You can see how those uh, hay is just starting to turn a lighter color. That means that getting a lot closer to maturity there. I bet here pretty soon it's going to start uh, drying from the bottom up and if I had to guess I'd say we're probably about maybe three weeks away from it being ready to harvest. I'm thinking sometime around the uh, probably the second week of June we'll have some wheat ready to cut and these uh, slightly cooler temperatures that we're experiencing here for the yesterday the next couple days you know high somewhere around the mid 70s that is perfect for that wheat. Not the best for planting cotton, but perfect for the weed on uh, letting it add a lot of weight to those uh, heads there. This little cool spell might have added another two, three bushels an acre for us. And the way these grain markets have tanked the last couple weeks, we need every bushel we can get. Although it really not going to affect our wheat crop because pretty much, I mean, unless we have just an exceptional wheat crop, you know, pretty much all of our wheat is already forward contracted for some excellent prices. But yep, the uh, corn, especially the corn and the wheat markets have just dropped like a rock. Soybean markets have headed down too. Cotton markets stayed kind of flat. So if that holds into fall, our projections that we made, uh, earlier this year back in January are not going to hold true and I'll be actually glad that I planted more cotton uh, back in uh, back in January when we did our projections cotton was looking like the lower revenue crop because the prices compared to corn and soybeans just wasn't as good now that we got our crop pretty much planted uh, the financial situation is starting to look a little different corn and soybeans not looking quite as profitable but uh, you know cotton's holding pretty strong and that right there is why we plant multiple crops we don't pay that much attention to the markets when we figure up our acreage we plant uh about even of everything because stuff like this you just don't have any idea what's going to happen later on in the year i don't have any cool gopro shots because i don't want to be outside so here you go that's what you're gonna get me and andy have been having gps problems where we get around the tree line right here and it just like there's no signal or it gets real wonky we're like we'll go ahead and go and then i'll lose like everything it'll just say auto track disengage and then there's no satellite so uh with this heavy stuff it's harder for him to see the rows than it is for me i've been doing the same fields for 20 years so um for me i can tell where i'm going uh, for him, it's a little bit more difficult. All right, making a quick pit stop uh, back here at the gym before we head over to our uh, last farms. You can see I've run all my seed out because it is time to uh, change varieties again. This time we're going with some Thrive on Cotton. And here comes Kelly. Now, if you remember from last year, we uh, tried some Thrive on Cotton for the first time, but it was uh, not approved for export use, so we had to go to a bunch of... Uh, 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 extreme measures to make sure there was no contamination with our other cotton. Well, this year, uh, Thrive On is now in commercial production. It has been approved for export use to select markets, so we don't have to go through all of that. But I wanted uh, my hoppers completely clean because based upon what we saw last year, this, uh, this Thrive On cotton is lights out on thrips. We'll not have to spray for thrips whatsoever. However, the rest of my cotton, which isn't Thrive On, probably will have to spray for thrips. And I didn't want any old cotton seed without the Thrive On gene uh, 
mixed in with this that would get planted in the field then we would have sporadic uh, plants throughout the field that would probably get hammered by thrips and just screw up maturity and might even die all that all that kind of stuff so like i said last year uh, this thrive on was lights out on thrips beautiful most beautiful young seedlings i've seen ever since we stopped using timic 20 five years ago or so it was absolutely phenomenal as far as plant bugs which is what it's really designed for uh, we didn't see any difference in plant bug control until late season late season we got by with one less spraying for plant bugs than what we did our other cotton so but i mean we knew that going in i'm primarily using it for thrift so the cotton gets off to a, a good start now our uh, Thrive on Cotton variety that we had last year did not yield all that well because it was a long season variety and we had an early frost. It was loaded up, the fruit was there, uh, but we didn't give it but about the bottom half of the plant open, the top half just didn't open up. This is a different variety with the same technology and this is a real early season variety so hopefully we see some big things from it this year. Anyway, we got 11 bags here. Uh, should be enough to cover the last uh, 70 acres and let's get them loaded up. All right. Got her loaded up. Man, I wish y'all could smell this. There's just, ain't nothing like the smell of cotton seed. Of course, that's what I grew up uh, smelling. It's the only kind of seed we planted when I was a kid. And I guess that's my reason for my fondness. Just bring back good memories of cotton planting back when I was a uh, kid loading seed into a uh, four row bridger planter oh i miss those days all right we're right over here right beside the last farm we planted before we got that rain a little over a week ago so i'm gonna jump over here real quick and see what it looks like hopefully it looks good or i might not be jumping over there I don't remember this thing being this wide or deep. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't like what I see. Some of it looks good, just, just like that. I mean, that, that's a good stand. And then you got a row right next to it. You got one plant down there, and then nothing till a plant down there. And you look at it, you know, that one's about to pop the surface, but then you got another one down here that's germinated. It's still way down in the ground. That one's still way down in the ground. You know, not even close to coming up out of the ground and I have my doubts if it would make it or not. There, there's another one's germinated, but way down in the ground. I just don't understand why it's not trying to push its way up out of the ground unless the soil temperatures down below is warmer than what it is up top because of this little bit of cool weather we have and uh, plant just basically just doesn't know which way to grow. I mean, I've, I've seen that happen before when you have a cold snap and then the top the soil surface, you know, cools down below what the, you know, what the temperature is a little bit deeper in the soil. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm saying a lot. I hadn't seen a rotten seed yet. I mean, all this stuff is germinated, but it's still just, it's still just so far in the ground. You know, there, there's one right there. It, I don't think it's ever going to push its way up. We want to let the rain come through tonight, get it the weekend, and get out here and do a lot of scouting. And then, you know, it's almost impossible to kind of spot plant into cover crop because you just can't see from the tractors you're going through the field. We might have to replant the last last day that we planted. I, I just don't know. I'm definitely not real happy about what I'm, I'm seeing out here. I mean, it's about half and half. You know, half of it where you got to good looking stand like that and then you just come over a row or two and I mean, you, you don't have anything up right there and this row right here i mean i, I can row it all the way down the row that look that looks beautiful um we'll give it a few more days and then do some serious scouting and try to determine if these areas that it's not up if i can kind of map it off and then drop in there and replant those and leave the rest or if we're just going to be better off just scrapping it all and starting over from scratch. I hate, man, I hate replant decisions. I absolutely detest them. As you can see right here, we, we still got trying to pop through. Although that one broke its neck coming out, that one probably ain't gonna make it. That one will. Oh well, 
no sense debating on it right now we still not done with our first plant yet so we'll get that done and then revisit this all right last pass of another field done got 30 more acres to do but uh I don't know if we can go and get it in or not. It, it ain't looking too too promising over that way. Look, darkening up pretty bad. All I need is like a hour and a half more. I don't know if we're going to get it or not though. So we're on the last farm. Uh, I had to wait for chemicals. I get over here and the neighbor is baling cover crop for feed. I guess for cows um, and of course puts the entire roll right up against our property line of this farm so gonna be interesting because I need to spray that and they're standing right next to it so I guess they're gonna get out of my way <sighs> it's always something and uh, got thunderstorms popping up so I need to hurry up and get this done Well, it looks like we got some a uh, little different going on here. Looks like we got a li little haylage going on. And that's where they uh, bale hay still real wet and then uh, wrap it in plastic and it goes through like a fermentation process, kind of like silage does, except it's hay. And uh, that farmer right there, we used to fa farm that ground, but uh, anyway, uh, he decided he wanted to farm it again anyway. He, he had a cover crop planted over there just like I did over here, except he's also got cattle and he cut his for, for hay or haylage and going to feed it this coming winter. He's feeding his above ground livestock with a cover crop, while I'm feeding my below ground livestock with a cover crop. Dark sky's getting closer. We're moving on along. We're a little over uh, half done with this farm. I'm getting uh, back close to caught up with Andy again. Cover crop still laying down like a dream. And Kelly's done spraying though, so we got to get this done before it rains. And I'm sure they'd like to get all their haylage uh, baled and wrapped before it rains too. All right, that's got all this wrapped up. We still got that about six acres left over there on Gary Williams to do. And, uh, since uh, the, what we got left over there is pretty confusing uh, rows, just let me get uh, done with this real quick and uh, follow me over there and just crimp, crimp that, crimp that behind me. Well, I do. Well, as soon as you get done, I'll be right behind you. Well, it looks like we're gonna make it. There's a kind of a nasty thunderhead just off to our north, but I think it's not heading towards us. So, looks like we may finish up this cotton plant without any drama, which is just fine with me and just like that my part in cotton planting is done <sighs> all right we're back over here on williams where we got uh rained out back on monday and as you can tell this paraquat has worked on the cover crop it is dead and it is crispy but that's going to lead to a potential problem hopefully not but i'm worried if it's going to be too wet over here because as you can tell from that ground cover well you uh you know the ground the ground is completely covered there's no uh evaporation from the soil and there's no uh, cover crop that's alive that's taking moisture out of the soil so i'm kind of worried how wet this is going to be although with rain potentially coming in it's not going to get any drier and like i said andy's going to be following behind me because uh, these r rows like run into each other real bad it's uh, kind of hard and confusing over here now we saved this field for last just uh trying to get as much time as we could to dry out i don't see any uh mud being uh, kicked up from the road cleaners onto the uh transport wheels so Looks like it's planting all right. Rain's still missing this. It's uh, skirting just to the north. Thank goodness. At least, at least that's going right for us. All right, I said last night we was uh, going to get done planting cotton before I had to cut my lights on, and we just barely made it. 
I'd say that is a successful cotton plant and then no raindrops and no headlights. Just to finish it up. It ain't successful yet until this cotton comes up and uh, well, I've, I've got my doubts. I'm really scared uh, we're going to have to do some replanting at some point. Don't know how much or where at, but I, I, I'm not feeling too confident about this stuff coming out of the ground, what I've seen so far. I saw you digging some up a second ago. Did you see any rotten ones out there or no? The only thing I saw up with was a seed that was almost on top of the ground whenever it rained. The rest of it hadn't even hardly started sprouting yet. Well, all we can do now, I guess, is wait and see if we can see a couple of sprouts. Lord, I thank you for being with us throughout this planting season, uh, helping us get through all the difficulties, the weather, the very condensed planting season. Lord, Lord, uh, Thank you for your blessings and letting us get all the seed in the ground. Now, Lord, we need your help again uh, to get the seed up, especially the cotton seed, Lord. Lord, we need this to turn out to be a good crop. In order to get a good crop, we need this seed to come up. So, Lord, I ask you to be with the seed, push it up out of the ground, let it be bountiful, let it glorify your name, Lord. And Lord, please be with us as we go throughout the rest of this season. Help us manage this crop according to your will, reach its maximum potential. Lord, I ask that you guide all of our decisions, move us out of the way, and help us make the most of every opportunity we've got this year, Lord. Lord, for I pray these things in Christ's name, amen. All right, now explain this to me. I just dug up a, a spot where we planted this maybe an hour and a half before that other spot that we dug up, you know, an hour and a half before the rain. Then look at this, every seed. That one's about to come out of the ground. That one's about to come out of the ground. That one was actually poking out of the ground. There's another one that had just poked out of the ground. And then there's another one right there, poking up out of the ground. I swear, it doesn't matter how many years I grow cotton, I don't think it's a crop that I'll ever figure out. Anybody figure out, it just, the way it acts. It is so dang finicky that no matter how much experience you got, some of your cotton crop probably going to do something you ain't never seen before and just out completely out of left field i don't i don't understand it but i feel pretty good about about this spot anyway so you know maybe if we got to replant maybe we all only got to replant what we planted the last hour before the rain i don't know we're just going to give it time see what comes up see what doesn't let me see if i can uh, cross this fence this was planted uh uh this was planted last week before we got rained out initially in the real good dry soil so let's see if i can cross this barbed wire fence without tearing my jeans up yeah i'm not i'm not liking what i see over here dug up a bunch of seeds right here in this stretch and every single one of them watch when i squeeze it see almost cottage cheese comes out and you smell it it's just rotten completely rotten and when we planted this the ground was dry i mean we were planting into moisture it wasn't dry it wasn't dry too dry it wasn't too dry to not germinate we were planting moisture but the ground was in perfect condition 85 degrees or so sunny and with like a 30 40 percent chance of rain in the next few days and we'd missed a lot of rains and but then we caught a rain and then we caught another rain then we caught another rain, three days in a row, totaling about three inches and just saturated the soil. But still, it was if it's warm enough to rot, warm enough to germinate, so I don't get it. And then the row right beside it, right there, bam, 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 bam. Makes no sense. But yeah, I'm in general just looking over this, I'm not liking what I'm seeing. It's Friday, we're gonna give it a few more days. I'm probably gonna do some pretty intense scouting this weekend, but it's not gonna surprise me at all if Monday morning I'm calling the seed dealer saying, round me up a bunch of seed. I'm, I'm about to start replanting. That's kind of what I'm expecting right now. I don't know. I know the good Lord heard my prayer. Now what his answer to my prayer is gonna be, Got to wait and see what his plan is. That's right, enough for now. We're going to fold this stuff up, get it uh, back to the shop. Uh, I know uh, probably tomorrow I'm going to get the pressure washer out, wash a lot of that mud off the planter, 
And then next week, while potentially I'm replanting, we got a lot of spraying to do. Our soybeans up to a good stand, needs herbicide on it. Corn's up to a phenomenal stand, need a herbicide on it. And then our corn's growing pretty good. Here uh, next week, it's also going to need side dress application of nitrogen. So, so we got to cover a lot of ground next week. And unfortunately, after looking at this cotton, I think we might have even more ground to cover next week. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.